game already this season. Yeah, Cindy Njai is a transfer from West Virginia University. Really long, great at the rim. But the thing that's impressed me the most about him on film is his skill level for a guy with that type of length and size. He's pretty skilled. It's about ready to go here and about the weakest tip off you've ever seen. What a buzzkill. About as nice as the weather outside today, Paul. <laughs> You're right. Nice to be indoors this evening. A cold and rainy day here in mid-November in South Carolina. Now the Tigers will get us underway. Chase Hunter coming in. Got to love what Chase Hunter's bringing to the table at the point. Yeah, Chase is off to a great start this season. He's been really consistent for the Tigers. They're going to need him to be able to continue to do that. Nice lob. Middlebrooks finds Brevin Galloway, the grad transfer. And we're underway. Tigers score first. Here come the Spartans. This is what that starting five looks like, and this is what we talked about. They've got some length. They've got some scoring ability. Njai at the five today as they finish right there. Jordan Ganey knocks it in. So Jordan Ganey, uh, the reigning Big South freshman of the year last year, off to a great start already this season, gets the Spartans on the board. No changes for the Tigers in their starting five. How about Chase Hunter to the basket? He's been so strong when he's gotten to the rim this year, finished really well, getting downhill, great creator for those post players as well. Upstate's got scores. Ganey, preseason first team, all Big South. Jumper for three, short. Trey Broadnax tried to get into the act. There's him and Wade for the Tigers. So a lot of set plays from the Upstate tonight. And so we've already seen two already. We're going to see a lot of inside-out type of offensive actions, a lot of set plays for Dave Dickerson and the Spartans. Body control there by Middlebrooks to avoid the charge. Hunter, nice kick. Tyson can't buy the three. And down with the board, the Spartans... That's Kadarius Smith. Broadnax picks his dribble up. Tigers up a bucket here. You see the Spartans patient offensively. They want to get themselves a good shot. The deflection by Middlebrooks. The Spartans late in the clock now. In and out, no good. A one-hand rebound by Ben. Tigers playing five on four at the moment. Great initial possession by the Tigers defensively. Revan Galloway off the mark. Galloway unafraid to pull a quick trigger, J.D. That's something you'll see often with him. Yeah, having the opportunity to coach Brevin Galloway for four years at the College of Charleston, there has not been a shot that uh, Mr. Galloway has not liked. <laughs> Three, no good. Off the back iron, Floyd Rideau Jr. Galloway pushing the tempo. Hemingway wanted that from the moment he crossed half court and missed it. Teams are shooting it about as well as uh, we said the weather is so far outside Qualk. Teams are getting good looks, just hadn't gone down yet. You know, Upstate done a really good job shooting three at over 40% allowing about 27% from three so far this season. I think a big part of that for the Spartans is they try to take really good shots. Coach Dickerson talked about that being something they take a lot of pride in. Wide open triple, knocked down by Hunter. Good start for Chase, he's got five. Great driving kick by the Tigers. Always want to create one for your teammate, and they were able to do that right there. A couple of open looks for Clemson from downtown. Again, the Spartans haven't given a lot. I said 27, actually 24.5% they've allowed from downtown the first two games against Brevard and Duke. Here's Jordan Ganey. Two long steps, and he'll head to the line. First foul of the night, whistled against Alex Simonway. Here's another look at the kick by Hemingway. Beautiful feed. Great pass, put it right on location, made it easy for Chase Hunter to catch and shoot. Good offense by the Tigers. Ganey two for two from the line this year. Spartans 15 attempts a game. They make two thirds. And Dave Dickerson going right to his bench. Amir Langlays gonna come on. He started one game down low. Plays about 15 minutes a night. 
Amir is a transfer from Western Carolina University. Got to start at Duke on Friday. Big, physical, strong guy at the rim. And now here comes Justin Bailey, the freshman from just down the road at Blue Ridge High School, averaging 12.5 points per game. The left-hander is off to a great start for the Spartans this season. And yeah, we highlighted two guys not in the lineup in our open, but you see how important they are to their teams, particularly on the offensive end. Galloway down the lane, beautiful feed for Middlebrooks, and he will get a chance to convert at the line. Foul whistled against Langley's first defensive possession. The Western Carolina transfer picks up his first. So you talked about both teams offensively early, Qualk, and uh, both teams are trying to find their rhythm. You know, USC Upstate's had some really key injuries so far this season. They're trying to figure out how to fill those roles, and Justin Bailey's going to be a big part of that. And then for the Tigers, you know, so much of it is going to be who can provide a punch off the bench. Coach Brownell going with Dylan Hunter here early in the game today. I think he's a freshman that they have to find a way to help get in rhythm. That'll bump his brother Chase off the ball with him in the game. Second free throw good by Middlebrooks. Tigers have doubled up the Spartans here early. Broad Max finds Bailey. Bailey, quite a spark plug off the bench relocates and gets the feet in the corner. 10 on the shot clock. Again, Bailey. Nice step back. The lefty missed it strong. So the Spartans are in no hurry right now. They're okay letting it get late in the shot clock, and obviously Coach Brownell is excited to see the Tigers defending so well throughout the clock right now. Galloway puts it on the deck. Gets in the lane and draws the foul, and he will go to the foul line. When we come back to Little John Coliseum, in just five and one in his career, including a perfect three and zero record on the sidelines for Clemson. Absolutely, uh, it's a great thing that he got to do this on his birthday. Talking to him yesterday morning, last thing I told him before we got off the phone was I wanted to be the first one to wish him a happy birthday. But uh, I know he wants nothing more than to see his team play well today. Yeah, both these teams coming off losses. That that one on Friday for Clemson and particularly crushing a game that they could have easily won in Columbia. You lose in the final moments of the game. A turnaround jumper to South Carolina. So far, so good to start for Clemson as Galloway hits the two free throws and the Tigers find themselves up six. Yeah, the Tigers got off to a great start offensively Friday night. You know, and they were able to find some rhythm, but then turnovers late in the first half stalled the offense. Beautiful feed there and the finish by Langley's. Great execution coming out of the timeout by uh, Dave Dickerson and his team. Ian Shefflin in the game and P.J. Hall. First touch for P.J. Blocked on the way up first and missed the rebound. And I love the battle between Hall and whoever ends up at the five, Langley's or Njai, for USC Upstate. Yeah, Coach Dickerson talked about that that position for them would really be by committee. And so we'll see a lot of guys match up with the Tiger big men tonight. Ganey misses his first three-point attempt. You don't see him miss many. No, the Spartans have gotten really good looks so far. Galloway rejected on his way down the lane. That's Kydarius Smith, and back the other way they go. No good again. And a foul whistled against the Spartans underneath as Shefflin hits the deck. Foul called against Langley's. That's his second, so now Dave Dickerson with a choice to make, and he will bring Floyd Rideau Jr. back in. So the Spartans are going to go a little bit smaller right here. It'll be interesting to see how the Tigers are going to match up right there whenever uh, who P.J. is going to guard and who Ian will guard. Dylan Hunter, the freshman at the point. Josh Beadle in the lineup as well. Sitting in the right corner right now for the Tigers. There's Hunter down the lane. Somehow got the ball to the rim. Fouled on the way up. And that's a foul on Rideau. I think one of the best things that the Tigers have done early in the season have been Chase Hunter and Brevin Galloway attacking the basket on the dribble. Uh, Brevin Galloway, obviously a fantastic shooter. Chase is a very capable shooter as well, but they've done a great job of attacking closeouts, getting downhill, being able to get to the free throw line. 
but also creating for their post players some easy shots with some dump downs. Nine different players for Dave Dickerson, averaging double digits in minutes. He's had to go deep into his bench here already with foul trouble. It's not just Langley's, but Rideau also with two fouls. And so much of that for Coach Dickerson and the Spartans has been because of the early season injuries that they've had. Four guys that they're without, and those have happened in just the last couple of weeks, so they're still trying to figure out that rotation. Um, and as they start to get some guys back, it'll make them better in the long run. Tigers up five now. This is Broadmax. Beatles on him, a really good on-ball defender. So Trey Broadnax and Josh Beadle, two guys that know each other well, played in the same AAU program. Trey Broadnax has great size, can see over defenders, terrific pass to find the upstate native Jordan Surratt in the corner for three. Yeah, Jordan Surratt, one of several dormant high products in the game today, including the one that just made that pass a little too high for Chase Hunter. You know, that's something to follow here. We see this three from Surratt. A lot of dormant on the floor today. A lot of guys know each other very well. Very, very well. There's a lot of South Carolina guys on the floor. And even though Trey Broadnax is from Savannah, Georgia, he played for a South Carolina AAU program. So these guys are very familiar with each other. Spartans can tie with a two. Take the lead with a three. Again, they don't mind triples. Driving down the left side, a lob, a little bit strong. Good rotations defensively for the Tigers for Surratt into a tough spot. Yeah, you can tell the Spartans are going to make the Tigers defend late into the shot clock. And uh, you've seen some great discipline even right there. That lane line drive, the Tigers were able to stay home. You call that stunt and stay. You know, you want that guy to feel like you're coming as he drives it lane line with his left hand, but then ultimately make him have to make a play over a defender and uh, turn it into a turnover. Shefflin looking for Hunter Tyson and a foul whistled. And it's going to be called against the Spartans. That's Surratt that gets called for the hold. So fouls palling up quickly here, J.D., and Dave Dickerson didn't like the call. No, they are. And the Tigers have made a really conscious effort early in the game to try to post up the Spartans. Hunter looking for Tyson across. Skip pass. Beetle in the corner. Can't knock it down. Beetle still looking for his first points of the season and now a foul on the rebound. And that's going to go against the Spartans as well. And that's the third player with two fouls as Surratt picks it up. One more look at this up under the rim. So an interesting battle right there underneath the basket. Jordan Surratt, a true freshman from Dorman High School. Hunter Tyson, obviously a 60-year guy for the Tigers. They've been really conscious right now, Coach Brunell and the staff, to try to go inside to whichever one of those Ford matchups that they like the best. And you see Hunter right there on the offensive glass. Lit on the basket right now for Clemson. Haven't made a basket in over four minutes. And that's ultimately what cost them on Friday night. They got off to a great start in the first eight minutes, hit a lull in the middle of the half. Gamecocks took advantage, and they never could really overcome that. Dylan Hunter overcomes that four-plus minute drought with a nice running bank shot. I love Dylan Hunter. You know, I think he's got to be a guy that can step up and, and help the Tigers offensively. Boy, he just got his clock cleaned on a screen, but the three too strong by Ganey. Here comes Chase Hunter down the floor. Crossover, this is where he is at his element and fit, finds P.J. Hall for the slam. It's been one of the best things that the Tiger guards have done this year, driving the ball, playing off of two feet, finding their bigs for easy shots at the rim. Broadnax to the wing. Hunter Tyson defending the drive of Smith. Long athlete from Nation Ford High School, another South Carolinian. Justin Bailey driving, goes up into Hall and couldn't get it to go. Spartans just three for 13 right now. P.J. Hall doing a great job staying vertical at the rim. Playing Hunter, without fouling. Back to Hall. Hunter Tyson in the lane, missed it. Couldn't give himself a third chance. Broadnax, nice slip. And then the errant pass by Njai. 
11.15 to go, and that leads us to a timeout on the floor. Now, before we started today, a moment of silence here at Clemson due to a tragic situation that occurred this week in Charlottesville, Virginia. We honor those who were affected by this senseless tragedy, and we ask that the families, classmates, and entire community remain... William Clarkamus, J.D. Powell with you. All right, J.D., let's put your coach hat on for a second. What are you saying in these huddles to try to get guys to knock down some of the looks that they're getting right now? Well, both teams have got good dribble penetration, you know, and they've gotten open shots. Uh, you just got to keep telling them that those shots are going to go in, trust your process, uh, all those simple things that as coaches we always talk about. You always got to believe the next one's going in. Tigers five makes, 13 shots so far, three for 13, and now the Spartans with a little pressure, trying to crank things up a bit. And Coach Dickerson has done this all the way back to when he was an assistant at the University of Maryland for Gary Williams. He loves to bring a little bit of pressure out of a timeout. How about Alex Hemingway down the lane with a soft lefty finish? He's a guy the Tigers really need to step up and help them in the scoring column moving forward. Only two points, uh, three points this past Friday night. Whistle. Foul on Dylan Hunter. Check out this play by Hemingway. Yeah, absolutely. You always talk about if somebody's going to pressure you, you have to make them pay for doing that. And so great pass ahead by Chase. Alex is able to get in the lane. Terrific finish. Dylan Hunter picks up his first. Tigers will be in the bonus throughout the first half. And, Qualt, just to finish that point on Hemingway for just a minute, you know, he led the Tigers in scoring on their trip this summer to France. They need him to step up and to continue to try to help them uh, as we move forward as the schedule's only going to get harder. P.J. Hall, and that's the second time in the possession that Justin Bailey sprawled out, and P.J. Hall whistled for the charge right there. And, again, you said it. Those guys are teammates. You know he understands exactly what P.J.'s trying to do when he puts it on the floor like this. No, he absolutely does. And, uh, you know, Curtis Wheeler, a guy in the upstate of South Carolina that runs that Upward Stars program. We talked about all those guys that are on the court. Uh, I've been in the gym many times to see all these guys playing together, representing the state of South Carolina. It's great to see them on the court tonight together. Tigers continue to defend well. Another drought for the Spartans, poked away by Galloway. And now Hemingway, with no numbers, will walk it across. Brevin Galloway finds Hall. Power dribble stripped away. Once again, Bailey getting his hands dirty. And then Hemingway with the turnover. That was a careless pass there. Alex up the floor, rejected, but a goaltending call. Honestly, I thought for a moment, J.D., Njai might just try to dunk it down himself right there. <laughs> he is a long, athletic guy. Running the play down from behind. You talk about how he's uh, protected the rim so far this year for the Spartans. You know, we didn't have a lot of turnovers in the first eight minutes of the game. We've seen uh, several in this last four minutes in this segment. Njai, native of Senegal, 6'10", transferred from West Virginia. Really, really talented, long guy at the rim. He will be very good for the Spartans in the Big South Conference this season. Nice finish there on the mid-range by Ganey. Great job of Ganey being able to get, the, get downhill, create some space for himself. He's the first name on the scout for every opponent for the Spartans, so he's going to have to be able to create his own shot. Freshman of the year in the Big South last year, him and Way misses the three. Coming up on nine minutes to play here first half. So you get a great feel for the Spartans and what Coach Dickerson wants to do. They got a missed shot right there, but instead of pushing in transition, walked it up, he called a set play. We've basically seen that every possession so far from the Spartans. Nice drive, the block, but a foul whistled on the drive. They're going to get Chase Hunter for some contact. That'll be Chase's first. And a two-shot foul coming up there. So even right here in this isolation action, that was a set play called by Coach Dickerson as they walked it up the floor. They were able to get Trey Broadnax isolated on the right side of the floor where he could come downhill. Trey Broadnax is a big, strong guy uh, from Savannah, Georgia. His uh, dad is Horace Broadnax, head coach at Savannah State University. But six foot four, 185 pounds. He is a big, strong guy, really talented guard for the Spartans. 
Jordan Surratt back in now as Njai sits down. Second free throw for Broadnax, in and out. Spartans have split four free throws to start. DJ Hall, pass and screen for Hunter. Not much you can do about that. Great seal by PJ in the post. Outstanding post speed by Chase Hunter. DJ with four points. We talked about his ferocious rehab process. Doctor said he'd play in December, but Brad Brownell said he circled the South Carolina game all along, and now an illegal screen called against Surratt. That's his third foul, so Coach Dickerson running out of options. Look at this seal one more time by Hall. My favorite thing about this finish right here by P.J., so much about tonight is going to be P.J. coming off of the South Carolina game. You know, obviously was recovering from that injury, worked really hard, but tonight is even a little bit harder than Friday because he's got to get his legs back under him. Showed that explosiveness right there. He looks pretty good. Hall, nice backdoor feed. Couple extra passes. Hemingway knocks it down. Beautiful basketball by the Tigers, and the Spartans want to talk it over. Outstanding ball movement, all created with a backdoor cut and a pass from P.J. Hall. Able to find that in the corner. One more pass to a teammate. When they won a national championship as an assistant for Gary Williams, the South Carolina lo native loves the University of Maryland. No question about that. I love everything about that as we get an offensive foul here. Foul called against Broadnax as Hunter hit the deck. He averaged 4.4 points a game that season and just casually dropped 12 and nine in 39 minutes in the biggest game for his team. Major upset victory. I mean, that's, that's a little moxie right there, saving the best for right there at the end of the year. Absolutely. Really important 8-1 game in the ACC tournament to step up like that for your team. Traveling called against Middlebrooks. You mentioned that the turnover's starting to pile up a little bit. We had a cleanly played first few minutes now Six for the Spartans and four for the Tigers. And really the issue for USC Upstate is they don't have any points off the first three turnovers. Clemson's got nine off the six giveaways for Upstate. Yeah, and the Spartans have got some really good looks offensively. They just haven't gone down. Now they've started to turn it over a little bit and the Tigers have turned that into offense. There's a look at your points off turnovers. Lefty three for Bailey. Freshman Jordan Bailey, Justin Bailey, excuse me. 12.5 points per game. They need him to step up, and, and right when they need it, he hits that big three. Middle Brooks. Pitch back to Hunter. He's tried to penetrate several times today. He's two for two from the floor, six points. Galloway will get downhill. And who is this on? Yeah, they're going to call the foul on Bailey. So that's his first. How about the shot from Bailey out of the wing? Great drive and find by Jordan Ganey. Finds his teammate. And then Brevin Galloway continues to use his strength to get downhill. You're talking about a six-year senior right there in Brevin Galloway going against a true freshman, able to use his upper body strength to get downhill, get to the free throw line. I asked Brevin a few weeks ago, aren't you tired of school? I mean, I was tired way before year six, man. Come on. And he said, you know what? I didn't like how last season ended. I was hurt. And he said, when I found out I had a chance to finish my career the way I wanted, I had to take it. And especially the opportunity here close to home, kid from Anderson. Yeah, having coached him at the College of Charleston, seen him since he was in high school at Seneca and just his growth and his maturity. Really, really proud of what he's done, both on and off the basketball court. Nice floater across the lane. Ganey knocks it down. He's got a game-high eight. So they're starting to move Ganey around off a lot of screening actions right there. They brought him off of a baseline pin down. He was able to curl it to his strong right hand and get to the rim and finish. Hunter gets his pocket picked. Broadnax eyes up the floor. No look pass, beautiful. And Smith the finish, and now Clemson wants a timeout as Brad Brownell not happy with his team. That's four quickies for the Spartans there, J.D. So much of it is a game of runs. And so the, the Spartans win that segment seven to two. 
they're right back in the game. The lead a little bit, but four straight buckets for the Spartans here. They started this game a little bit slow offensively, but they've seemed to find that rhythm you were talking about a few minutes ago. Yeah, I think they've started to settle down just a little bit. You know, they're coming off the Duke game on Friday night where they never really uh, got sped up or looked out of place. It really is more a thing of Duke's length forcing 23 turnovers. Here they've been able to execute. They just hadn't been able to make shots, but they've settled down in the last couple of minutes and have gotten some good looks. Hunter stopped at the elbow. Bailey not going to let Galloway have it. Skip pass Hunter. Hemingway in the corner. Cashes it in. A beautiful cross-court look. P.J. Hall gets up a little bit gimpy. So one of the first things that you notice coming out of that timeout, Coach Brownell put him right back in the game. But Middlebrooks is back up off the bench. He's going to get P.J. here in just a second. Again, this is Bailey. You see his creativity on display here in the first half. Njai, deep two, knocks it down. I love you, that kid's game. It's the first thing that I noticed on film watching him, you know, how well he shot free throws. He's shooting 75%. He's 9 of 12 from the free throw line. And there you even see him face up and knock down that jumper. Nice curl by Galloway. Banks it home. Spartans bench wanted a foul there on the push off, and Dave Dickerson is upset there again. I think he's upset with the defense more than anything else. Well, there's been two physical plays on each end of the floor right there. Uh, P.J. on one end and then Brevin on the other. Neither one was called. The officials are letting him play. Lob. Njai. Going to go to the line. The insertion of Njai in the starting lineup. Here you see the skip pass. Great find by Chase Hunter. Alex Hemingway hits his second one of the game. And then this face-up jumper right there from Njai, that's impressive. A guy with that type of size and length, his ability to protect the rim, make that face-up jumper. And then that pick and roll in the last possession right there between him and Broadnax, outstanding pass by Trey Broadnax. Gets Njai to the uh, free throw line. Njai just two for seven in the first two games of the season coming in. I guarantee you the 18-foot square-up face-up jumper was not on the scout. No, that wasn't on the video edit that the uh, Clemson staff showed yesterday for sure. <laughs> and that's the thing about preparing for games like this. You know, the Clemson staff, you lose at South Carolina on Friday night three days ago, and so now they've just been pouring into this film trying to get these guys ready to play because I can promise you Dick Bender and staff at Clemson, Billy Donlin, they know how good this upstate team is. Some reinforcements coming in both ways. Thomas Shada in for the first time for USC Upstate. He's digging down on Hunter, and boy, uh, they came together. Jordan Ganey locked up with Hunter there as he stumbled backwards, and now like cooler heads will prevail. No, we said it just a second ago, Qualt. This game has gotten a little bit physical. This is a confident upstate team. They take a lot of pride in being able to pressure the basketball. They want to be physical with you, and you're seeing that on display right now. Ganey, a very good player. Off to a bit of a slow start this season. Now he's three for six today, but 0 for two from downtown. He's four for 11. A little bit of a volume shooter. He's not been able to get more than maybe one or two clean looks so far today. So Jordan Ganey is the son of Justin Ganey, University of Tennessee basketball assistant, longtime college coach. He played at NC State. Had a chance to visit with him last night and talk about his son. He's so proud of what he's done. But I even asked his dad the question, is there any pressure to follow up what he did last year? Because you look at his stats as a freshman, those are really, really impressive. Those are going to be hard to top because now everybody knows who you are going into every game. They're, he's going to be the first guy that they talk about in a scouting report. Again, he just an unbelievable revelation for this team last year as they won 10 league games. First time in the upstate history winning 10 conference games in the Big South Conference. And now you're seeing, seeing them start to get in a little bit of a flow now. Ganey looked at his bench like, now I'm feeling good. He's got 11. 
No, he's feeling more comfortable now. Duke didn't give him a lot of space on Friday night. The Tigers are trying to be right there on every shot, but he's a talented guy. Hunter right to the rim, and they're going to count it. 34-23, Tigers by 11 after the goal 10. We'll step aside and take a break. We'll complete the first half after course stats, riveting analysis from J.D. Powell. We'll give a little bio for Clemson's newest signee. That happened just recently. And then, of course, we'll give you some highlights from here in the first half. Some things that stand out to you so far, J.D., as we enter the home stretch of half number one. As both teams have taken a little bit better care of the ball, they've gotten some easier shots, the biggest thing is to look at the shooting percentages. You know, uh, Clemson uh, is up about 22% from where they were about eight minutes ago. The Spartans have settled in as well. So both teams are finding an offensive rhythm now. They've ever seen a game a lot coming from the foul line and points off turnovers. Tigers plus five in that free throw department. Broadnax has run the point pretty well for the Spartans here in the first half. And Jai, a little dribble handoff. Feed back out, three on the way, way off the mark from Smith. So Chauncey Wiggins checks in for the Tigers, the really talented freshman. I'm sorry, that was R.J. Godfrey. But, uh, you know, one of the big things Coach Brownell is going to talk about is just being able to trust him. Lost his man a little bit there defensively, and he got loose. And Josh Beadle lost the ball out of bounds there. Beadle a little bit out of control getting downhill. Sure, you look out on the floor right now for the Tigers. You see uh, two freshmen. You see a sophomore with two older guys. But this is going to be an interesting three minutes right here. Who can win the last four minutes of the half is such a huge part. Foul whistled against Godfrey there. You see it. Physically, Godfrey's impressive. Son of Randall Godfrey, longtime NFL linebacker. But even for a freshman, he's going to come out after this. Sure, the uh, North Gwinnett High School native, obviously physically really strong. Coach Brownell loves his intensity and his intangibles, particularly on the defensive side. But being able to play without fouling, that's, that's been a big part of uh, Coach Brownell's message to RJ. First free throw, good. Kydarius Smith, 6'8", 255, well put together. Yeah, he's a great story. You know, he from Fort Mill, South Carolina, signed at Upstate, and he's a guy that has stuck around. He's gotten better throughout his career. I remember when he was a younger guy coming out of high school, uh, was a little bit thinner, but he's just continued to improve his game. He's going to have a great senior year. Tigers lead cut to nine. It's been as many as 13. Spartans have not led in the first half. Chase Hunter, nice pocket pass to Shefflin. Tyson spins, couldn't get the roll. Really good one-on-one -on -one defense by Kadarius Smith right there, was able to force the Tigers into a tough pull-up. Once again, Broadnax running the show. Spartans content to play in the half court. Broadnax finds some room on the baseline. Three on the way. Yes, sir. There's Bailey getting into the act. His second three of the night. All started with a ball screen action right there. Broadnax came off, drove the baseline, was able to find his teammate in the corner for a wide open shot. The Spartans have gotten good looks. They're starting to go down now. Bank shot up and good. Ian Shefflin finds the glass. Lead back up to eight. Correction, that's Galloway who found it. And Brevin continues to attack the rim well off the dribble. Floater blocked from behind there. Good defense by Galloway. Tigers with a chance to run. No good by Hunter. Njai, another rebound. That's five for him in the first half. Talking to the Upstate staff before the game, that was the biggest thing they talked about with Sine Njai. They talked about his rebounding productivity in the minutes that he plays. Talked about just how productive he is in those uh, minutes and how many he can get done in that small amount of time. Spartans a chance to cut into this lead further. Ganey going back to the line. P.J. Hall going to get the final 93 seconds on the floor here. 
Beetle picked up the foul. That put the Spartans in the bonus. Ganey's first is good. And the other thing to uh, take note of is Upstate has gotten into a better offensive rhythm is they've started making their free throws. You know, they shoot the ball well from the free throw line, but they were three of six to start the game. They've now made their last four in a row, starting to get into a little bit of a rhythm. Ganey cooking now. He's got 13 points in the first half. He's got his team from 13 all the way back within six. And as really good scorers do, Ganey continues to get to the free throw line. Hunter Tyson straight away. Nice ball movement by the Tigers. Great job by the Spartans and a blocking foul called. Tried to draw the charge and Bailey couldn't get the whistle. That's two fouls on Bailey. So Brevin Galloway attacking the closeout to his left. Justin Bailey tries to cut him off. That's about the fourth confrontation at the rim or, or right there, that uh, block charge call that uh, Dave Dickerson hasn't gotten yet. He's trying to get his staff to calm down. They're not too happy about it right now. Galloway's free throw up and good. Yeah, the Tigers have gotten to the line a bunch here. Both teams, eight of 11 from the line early. It's been a physical game. Very physical, both in the paint and on the perimeter. You see that in the 18 fouls called so far. And don't look now, Brevin Galloway with 12 points. He's six of six from the charity strike. Spartans foul issues continue. That will be a factor in the second half, no doubt about it. Dylan Hunter, front of the point right now. Finds his brother Chase. Floater from the foul line, nope. Again, good defending by the Spartans. Chance to go two for one if they wanted, but they do not seem interested in getting that, JD. No, the Spartans haven't played very fast at all today. They've wanted to keep this thing slow, try to get as many good shots as possible. Ganey, quick first step, and he's gonna go to the line. Boy, he teleported right past the defender that time. And he's disappointed that that didn't go in. You know, that's a great look for him. And so now Coach Dickerson is gonna try to get a defensive group on the floor to manage this last 23 seconds without fouling, try to get some guys off the floor that might be in foul trouble. Meanwhile, Coach Brunell is gonna bring Alex Hemmen way back, try to get the best offensive group that he can on the floor for this last possession. This is big right here, Qualk. So Jordan Ganey's at the free throw line. He can cut it to six. Then it becomes, can the Tigers come back down? Uh, how are these last 23 seconds gonna play out to finish the half? And for the Spartans, it's really been about survival. You talked about the Tigers were up by as many as 13. Spartans have been in foul trouble basically throughout the half. They're just trying to finish this thing well, be out of here uh, down six. Coach Dickerson will take it. Tigers will hold for the last shot here. Good battle brewing here in the first 20 minutes. Tyson kicks to the corner. Chase Hunter rips the cord. And that'll send us to halftime. Good play from Brad Brownell's Tigers there to close the half. Great find by Hunter Tyson. The play was to go inside to P.J. Hall on the post up. Didn't have it. Was able to find his teammate in the corner. Chase Hunter knocks down the three and is able to push the lead in minutes of the half. But they've got to continue to attack the paint, whether it's off the dribble with Chase Hunter and Brevin Galloway or throwing it inside to P.J. Hall. And you see he's going to start the second half after not starting the game. So here we go. Yep, the nine starters that began things and P.J. Hall out of the locker room. The Spartans. Tigers led for double digits for a little while, but this has primarily been a single-digit advantage for Clemson throughout this game. What a nice cut there. And speaking of extra passes, Smith going to work on Tyson, and he throws it away. That was great defense by Hunter Tyson that time. It was, and Kadarius Smith just caught himself in a bad spot right there on the baseline. He left his feet, had nowhere to go with the ball. Hunter Tyson 
no points in the first half, but six rebounds and some good defense like that. So we have our first whistle, and that's on Njai. Now, again, we talked about how the fouls are piling up. Simi Njai, the only one for the Spartans that's played down low that's not in foul trouble at the moment. But the first set of the second half for uh, Coach Brownell is a post-up, a high-low look from Hunter Tyson trying to post up P.J. results in a foul. Galloway looking for an outlet. The length of Smith defensively has been a problem for Tyson. Not a problem on that move as he has cracked the code. And he's got the first points for Clemson here in the second half. Sure, and we talked about it at halftime. For Hunter Tyson to not score in the first half and you're up nine, that's really a good sign for Coach Brownell and the Tigers. Ganey off the screen, hanging and hitting. How about this kid? He was out of the locker room, it felt like immediately, sprinting out here to get a ball to get some more shots up. He was ready to go, and that's great use of his pivot foot right there to get a shot at the rim. Outstanding. Hemingway tried to feed it back to Hall, and again, Ganey knocks it away. So Hunter Tyson is able to get downhill to his right hand, able to turn the corner, and then right here, this is outstanding footwork by Jordan Ganey. Drives it to his left, pivots back, steps through, able to finish. Ganey's showing that mid-range game. Galloway back to the basket, loses it. Five to shoot. Wide open layup. That time he lost the ball and it helped him out, I think, cleared a little space. It did. Coach Dickerson is not going to be happy about these first two possessions uh, for the Spartans to, for the Tigers to be able to come out and get two layups like that. That's not what he's looking for coming out of the locker room. Now, that one's a careless turnover there. Ganey with a little bump of the shoulder on his way by on the handoff. And that's been a point of emphasis really since last year to try to clean that up. It is. You know, those guys, those bigs get put in such a tough position right there trying to keep play without their hands, play without putting their body into that guy. Oh, Hall with the cut to Hemingway. Timeout called, and you're right. Dave Dickerson not happy at all. He'll chat with the Spartans, the Tigers in command early second half. So much of the Tigers' offense is predicated on those bigs being able to pass the ball from the top of the key. So it's a set play. Brevin Galloway clears out right there, allows P.J. Hall to bring it to the left, drops it off, set play back door. That was nice. Now you see all smiles on the Clemson side. On the upstate side of things, though, you said Dave Dickerson with a very simple message for his team in that timeout. Yeah, it was great to be able to listen in to Coach Dickerson right there. And his first question when his players sat down was, how can we expect to win this game giving up three consecutive layups coming out of the locker room? And so that tells me two things, Qualk. It tells you what their expectation was coming into Clemson tonight. They felt like they can win. They know that they could. And then the question was, what is their standard right now defensively? Because clearly giving up those layups in the half court aren't it. Alex Hemingway, by the way, you saw that graphic. 12 points, five of seven from the floor. Most important to me, three for three from two point range. Not something we're used to seeing from him. Wild shot in the paint and then an open three for Bailey. He's three for four for downtown. How about the youngster from Blue Ridge High School cooking? So much of it for Mr. Bailey right now is being able to play off of his teammates. He's getting really good looks because of the attention that Jordan Ganey gets, and he continues to knock him down. Tyson, nice spin to the baseline. Feed for Hall, who flushes it. Tyson could have had him a layup there, but instead shares the ball. That's the 10th assist of the game on 19 makes for the Tigers. It's one of the best things that the Tigers have done so far on this early season is that interior passing, whether it be from a guard or from post to post, as that one was from Hunter Tyson. Great driving kick right there by the Spartans, finding Justin Ganey. I'm sorry, uh, finding uh, the guy on the perimeter, but then right there, Hunter Tyson down low finds P.J. for the easy dunk. This is Trey Broadnax, his first point of the game. Missed all three shots and both free throws in the first half. Did have four assists, so a good job running the show. Third-year sophomore transfer from Navy. 
and a third-year sophomore who spent a year at the Naval Academy in their prep school. So really a fourth year in college. My favorite thing about his game at Duke, 29 minutes, only two turnovers. Really good job taking care of the ball in Cameron Indoor Stadium on Friday night. Kydarius Smith off the floor, getting tended to for a moment. P.J. Hall going to work. Shot missed by Dylan Hunter. Ganey. Well, they're going to hedge on him, I would imagine, just about every possession of the second half, and Broadnax just took his eye off of it. He did, just got a little bit ahead of himself as Justin Bailey threw that back up to the top. It's a frustrating first three and a half minutes for the Spartans. Upstate, they've made shots so far in the second half. Sure. Also just Also turned the ball over. Yeah, and then unable to get some stops. You know, they didn't get a stop until that last possession with the missed three. But the Tigers continue to try to pound it inside. This time, P.J. Hall uh, in the high-low action trying to find Hunter Tyson at the rim. That's good awareness there, too, because you had a switch. You got a point guard in Broadnax with Tyson on him. An obvious post-up situation there. Broadnax picks up his second foul. That's the third on the Spartans. Langley's back in, by the way, guarding P.J. Hall. Hunter the drive and the float, no good. P.J. a strong rebound and gets it. Great job of wedging his defender up underneath the basket and then being able to use his length to rebound and finish over the top. All five Spartans on the floor right now have two fouls, so no real second half foul trouble. Nice defense by P.J. P.J. Hall using his length creates that deflection. Another Spartan turnover. Chase Hunter. The other way. No numbers, though. Oh, Ganey. Too strong. Oh, wide open. Bailey to the bucket. So the Spartans haven't attacked very much in transition. They pitch it ahead. Redu finds his teammate Ganey running behind him. Spartans are able to get an offensive rebound, get an easy one at the rim. They haven't gotten very many easy so far tonight. Nice kick by Dylan Hunter. P.J. Hall in and out, and a foul whistled. And again, it's going to be a foul on Broadnax. Foul's continuing to pile up for the Spartans. A little bit more aggressive sometimes, and that was an aggressive shot right there. They got into a ball screen switch. He created some space, got it off. 20 points for him. Hunter using that screen, rejected. Here they come, two on two. Ganey puts it on the floor and missed. He was between the dunk and the layup there and Clemson with a free possession. And Dylan Hunter throws it away in a foul. He was grabbed on the way by by Rideau. Great drive by Hunter Tyson. Great body control right there to finish. The 6'8 guy making it look really easy. Floating through the lane. How about this from Ganey? Whew. It's amazing how sometimes the hard ones can go in and then you get that shot right there at the rim. Jordan Ganey won't miss many of those. Dylan Hunter misses strong. Tigers will be shooting free throws from now to the end. Less than seven minutes into the second half, already in the bonus. This is Rideau. Broad Nax and a foul whistled against Ian Shefflin. Hadn't seen Ian much today. Picks up his first foul. We haven't seen Ian, and so much of it after the Citadel game played so well, 22 points. Uh, did not score in the game at South Carolina on Friday. Uh, has not scored yet tonight, I don't believe. And so the Tigers need some production from that other post player. Coach Brownell is hoping that it could possibly be Ian. He and Hunter Tyson both had double doubles against the Citadel. There's a lob to space. And Shefflin able to pick it up. Rideau upset with himself. You can tell he's trying to get it back. Ian, nice feet inside the two-handed flush. 
The Tigers continue to go to that high-low action, and the Spartans haven't been able to solve it yet. Tigers up 13. They were up nine at the half, and they have extended it. Broadmax, nice defending by Tyson out of the corner. Dropped down to help and still was able to get to his man. Two, one to shoot, Broadnax fouled on the drive. So the Spartans get Ian Shifflin in a ball screen switch. Broadnax sees it, immediately tacks downhill, able to draw the foul. But the other thing too, Qualk, right before this 12 minute media timeout, uh, Coach Dave Dickerson takes Jordan Ganey off the floor, allows him to get a breath so that he can catch it through the media timeout. Coach Dickerson wants that under 12 to get here quickly, though, so he can put him back in. Foul called on Hunter Tyson, they got. Not Hunter. And it'll send Broadmax to the line. Brad Brownell saying that was on the floor. He's not going to win that argument. Beetle in as Dylan Hunter checks out. Two points for Dylan. Broad Max knocks down both free throws. 57-46. As we're under 12 minutes to play here in Clemson. He had Shefflin, nice feed to Hunter. That's as easy as it gets right there. I've been really impressed with the Tigers' ability to execute coming off of free throws and dead balls so far this season. They've gotten some really good looks at the rim. Evident there again with that layup. Tigers rotating well defensively on the right side. Broadnax, floater over Hemingway. How about that? Really tough shot. Tigers stayed home, were able to use their length, but Broadnax sometimes good offense is just better than good defense. Back up 11. Shefflin looking to enter it in. Beetle. Finds Tyson on the right side. Shefflin looking to go. Oh, beautiful kick to Hemingway. Yes, sir. Alex Hemingway continues to play well for the Tigers today. That's his third made three. Really going to help his confidence moving forward. Largest lead of the game so far, 14. The second time the Tigers have had it. Sure, and I go back to Coach Dickerson subbing Jordan Ganey out. That media timeout waited just a little bit longer than Coach Dickerson wanted it to to get here. Langley gets a chance at a three-point play when we come back. After a timeout on the floor, Tigers up a dozen because of plays like this. Scoring, but he's been a good teammate as well today. We'll see all the different ways he's gotten involved, J.D. Absolutely. The backdoor pass is what really makes him such a special player. You know, his ability to pass it from the top of the key. He has great length at the rim. He's an outstanding finisher, but he can stretch the floor. The ACC's most improved player last year, uh, obviously coming back from injury, but he's off to a great start. Played well Friday night against the Gamecocks and, uh, and looks good today. I was worried about it. You know, how does he come back after that physical game at the University of South Carolina Friday night? Played 22 minutes, but he's off to a great start tonight with 10 points. He's played 17 minutes and they're not gonna let him go full bore. Still probably in that 20 to 25 minute range that we as we've uh, had conversations, but you know, the doctors originally told him coming back from the injury that December is probably best case scenario. The coaches have said he himself circled the South Carolina game and wanted to get back for that. And yeah. give him a lot of credit for attacking his rehab with that in mind. How about Ian Shefflin with authority? Great job being aggressive on the glass by Ian Shefflin. The Tigers need him to step up and be able to provide some extra punch down there. Tyson to Beetle. And a timeout for Upstate. Dave Dickerson not pleased at all with how his team came out of the timeout. Some hustle from Clemson leading directly to offense. Sure, the Tigers find two shots right there at the rim. One an offensive rebound. Ian Shifflin on the putback right here coming in, crashing the glass. And then the second one just turning a turnover into offense. Tigers have done a good job of that so far this year. Uh, Hunter Tyson gets it out on the break, finds Josh Beadle running two layups at the rim. And that's really been the story of the second half so far. The Spartans have not been able to stop the Tigers in the paint. That's now 40 points in the paint. 
This is the largest lead for Clemson today, 66-50. We talked about during the break, J.D., USC Upstate's got to make a choice here because they, they have not been able to defend without fouling inside. They're giving up points in the paint. They got to kind of pick their poison a little bit and hope Clemson knocks down some shots or they got to change. They can't turn the ball over. We know that, and, and that, especially in a full-court situation, just a careless way to lose the ball and give up three points on the other end. Absolutely. It was a pretty good defensive possession even, the one before, and now yeah. Ian Shefflin comes in, makes a great hustle play, but then they turn it over. That leads to a live ball turnover and a layup. There's no defense for that. Broadnax, nice curl by Ganey. Langley trying to make a move on Shefflin with the left hand. He missed it. Galloway clears the board. And Amir Langley is going to be aggressive down there. Watching him on film this week, he wants to try to score, particularly over that right shoulder, a left-handed post player. Pretty good move, just couldn't get the shot to go down. Shefflin again, a skip pass. Hunter for three. That's the second pass in the second half that Ian Shefflin has found a shooter on the perimeter. Really good offense right there by the Tigers. Ganey wide open. He's not going to miss those. 22 points for the sophomore Ganey. And Ganey knocks the ball away from Beadle. Finds a teammate up the floor. Nice up and under move by Bailey and four quickies for the Spartans. Right back in it. Jordan Ganey showing some defensive presence right there. Knocking the ball away from Josh Beadle. Leads to the transition basket for the Spartans, which they have not gotten many of. Chase Hunter, ooh, he wanted it. Galloway skip all the way to the corner. Rebound cleared by Surratt. And I think Brevin Galloway thought Chase Hunter was gonna shoot it. He wasn't quite shot ready, kind of fumbled that catch, threw him off rhythm. Ganey thought about it. He's got a smile on his face. He wants the ball back. Nice feed on the block. Langley kicks it back out. Fade in the lane, got the roll. Broadnax has got eight. Second time we've seen Spartan guards get into the lane in the second half, use that pivot foot really well to create an angle to be able to score. Really well done by Trey Broadnax there. Galloway with the right hand. He just plays like a guy who's been in college basketball a million years, doesn't he? His body is in great shape, Qualk. It's the best that I've seen in three years. I love to see Galloway attack. Now with you and JD, you made a good observation. Both these teams shooting very well in the second half, but it feels like the shots that Clemson's getting are a little bit easier and they're converting them at just a slightly better rate. One of the biggest stats that I love to study, Qualk, when I was an assistant coach was, what are we giving up from two right now? Because I'm a big believer, whoever can score it at the rim, whoever gets the most layups, is probably gonna win. You look at the Tigers in the second half, they've been able to do that. They're 11 of 15 from two. When you can get to the paint and get those easies, those kick out threes become so much easier uh, whenever you're getting those inside outlooks. Tigers six of 17 from three, but they've scored it primarily in the pain. And Hunter Tyson gets the rebound, needs some help. Tigers are gonna make it a three or four point possession after Galloway splits the pair. Chase Hunter can't shed his defender. Good job by Bailey to flank him. Pass goes out of bounds with three to shoot. The Tigers will inbound. And we continue to see that high-low look. Hunter Tyson posting up the freshman, Jordan Surratt. He got some over-the-top help that time from Trey Broadnax, though. Galloway's got to put it up. And a shot clock violation as Shefflin went up high. Couldn't tap it in time. That was a tough catch-and-shoot situation for Galloway. Good defense out of the timeout by the Spartans. But you know what? Over Brevin Galloway's career, watching him at the College of Charleston and Boston College, he's one of the best tough shot makers late in the shot clock that I ever had an opportunity to coach. I was almost surprised it didn't go in. Broadnax, what a pass and the kick out. No good on the three. That's Surratt. He made his only one in the first half. 
Hunter Tyson, mid post. Oh, what a move and finish for Hunter. Early transition offense, Hunter Tyson able to get to the rim. Posts up, Trey Broad next. The Tigers are able to get another basket in the paint. Tyson did not score in the first half. He's got eight so far in the second. Smith couldn't get it up over Shefflin. Tell you what, Shefflin's given some good possessions of defense with long arms, forcing the Spartans to come up a little bit short. No, I agree. And the other part is his offense. You know, I think that Coach Brunell feels like he's got to be that second post player that can step up and give the Tigers a score and punch in the paint. Strong rebound grab by Smith. Spartans want to push here. Broad Max runs right through Chase Hunter, and I think he knew he was sliding his feet there. Block and foul is his third. Great early post up right here by Hunter Tyson. Tigers recognize the matchup right there in the paint. Hunter Tyson takes his time, able to get to his spot and scored at the rim. But Qualk, the other thing that I would tell you too is that I think that we came out of that under eight media timeout and you can start to see the physicality of the game wearing on both teams. That's a bunch of fouls on both sides. There's been a bunch of really physical plays at the rim. You're starting to see that just a little bit more wear on those guys from both teams. Both teams in the bonus now, one and one. Ganey, Hemingway all over him. Ganey gets inside, and he just flings it up there. And it goes out of bounds off the Tigers. That is a free possession coming for the Spartans. That's the first time we've seen Ganey really force one. Yeah, he trying to get to a spot, you know, trying to use that shot fake and step through. Tigers didn't go for it, but they get an extra possession right there on the uh, missed box out, missed defensive rebound by the Tigers. Danny, a kick out. We'll get it back. Smith. Surratt drives. Good defense by Hemingway. Three on the clock. Nice split there. Broadnax gets the roll. Really good defensive possession right there by the Tigers. Uh, the Spartans got into a switch. You could hear Coach Brownell yelling to him to stay on the perimeter with Ganey, but uh, Spartans are able to find one late in the shot clock. Tyson a quick three off the mark. Let's see if Upstate can answer here with a bucket. Surratt. Swing around, Broadnax to the rim, and he's fouled on the way by. Just Dylan Hunter. Really smart basketball play right there by Trey Broadnax. I can promise you he knows that they're one foul away from the bonus. He catches it on a reversal. Anytime a big is running into a ball screen, it's a great time to refuse that ball screen and drive it back to the baseline. In the NBA and internationally, they talk about they want to refuse as many as 80% of the ball screens. Trey Broadnax able to do it right there. He's going to get to the free throw line because of it chance to get it to 12 points. Is that just because the defense relaxes a little bit? You feel like you can get to that outside shoulder? I think most of that becomes, you know, we have a plan when they use it. You know, we want to force guys into a ball screen. When he can refuse it, we don't have as much help to the other side. Chase Hunter across the 10 second line for Clemson. DJ Hall sets up Hemingway. Yep. Great job by P.J. Hall creating that shot for his teammate. Interesting to see P.J. gets back in the game right there. It immediately leads to a Clemson basket for a teammate. Game, he's found the going tough the last few minutes. Now he's got it in a scoring position. Bailey. Second leading scorer on the team and tried to find Ganey and the ball goes out of bounds. It's a great cut. Jordan Ganey does a great job of moving without the basketball. Now, he's a little bit worn down right now. We're late into the game. He's driven the ball multiple times. But I've been impressed with his ability to play without the basketball. You know, first half, they were bringing him off of those baseline curl actions. It was able to help him get into a rhythm, getting some free throws. And even right there, you know, that play, he's going to make that play most of the time off of that back cut, uh, pass to the rim. He just saw P.J. coming out of the corner of his eye and couldn't finish it. Rideau and Langley back in. Drive, and he lost a handle. Galloway off the turnover. 
Tigers good in retreat defensively, and then they left Broadnax alone for a jumper. And an official timeout. And that'll take us to a media timeout. Under four to play, Tigers in command. Done it all season. You know, he's averaging 8 point, 18 points per game early in the year, obviously, but he just continues to create for teammates. That's probably been the thing that has impressed me the most about what Chase Hunter has done this season. So much of the offense that especially Ian Shefflin has gotten, even P.J. Hall, some of the other guys, has been because of offense created by Chase Hunter when he's gotten into the paint and found somebody else. One stab we didn't throw up there, three of five from three-point range, and if he's giving you that, in addition to what he can do driving and creating, that mid-range game, it's a complete player if he can round that out. No, he's off to a great start. You know, one of the most improved guys in the ACC so far in the early part of the season. He's playing with a lot of confidence. My favorite thing is the pace that he plays with. And right, right on, on cue. cue. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, now four of six from three tonight. Uh, Chase Hunter is off to a great start this season. And even 20 for Hunter. Oh, a foul called against Galloway there as he runs right through Bailey on the cut. You know, we wondered if Coach Dickerson might put Ganey back in the game. Here's the last shot by Hunter. We'll get back to that. Look at that smooth stroke. Sure, and so much of that one right there, you know, that's a contested three. You know, Brevin Galloway drives it to his left. He finds Chase. But you can tell in that shot right there, he feels really confident. There's no hesitation in that. His eyes are on the basket immediately. Never any doubt about whether or not he was going to shoot that basketball. And you know, we wondered if he might put Ganey back in after the media timeout. He gave him an extra 37 seconds of game time to rest, and now he's back on the floor. Two free throws up and good for Bailey. Freshman from Blue Ridge High School here in the area. Got 15. He's a leading scorer for this team per game coming in first two against Brevard and Duke. Sure, and Coach Dickerson has talked about, you know, with the injuries that Upstate has had so far this year, they're going to need to get some guys to step up by committee, and Justin Ganey is uh, right there at the front of that group right now. Hunter loses it. P.J. Hall, nice hesitation move, and the finish with the left. That is a high, high-level finish right there, Qualk. He took it to his left, faked back to the other shoulder, and then to go to that left-handed jump hook, that's really, really nice. P.J. is quickly getting back into form after that injury. Broadnax, nice dump down, and the finish. Langley delivers. Trey Broadnax continues to be really good in the pick and roll. That's about the third time that he's been able to find that big uh, with his eyes up, guy at the rim, really good job by Trey. 12 the, points, five assists for him today. And the Spartans have played well. You know, it's 80 to 64. Uh, I know it feels like it's a little bit further away than what it is. Coach Dickerson and the staff will go back, they'll watch this film tonight. And they're going to leave Clemson disappointed. You know, they felt like they could come in here, that this is a game that they could win. I think you have to give Clemson a lot of credit for their mental approach coming in after the game on Friday. But Coach Dickerson and the Spartans will return home. Uh, they'll play Coastal Carolina on Friday before going out to the Air Force Academy early next week, which is, while a great trip and a beautiful place, it's a really hard trip. So the Spartans have their best basketball in front of them. They'll be able to take some really good things away from this tonight. Hall misses the front end of a one and one. That was Langley's fourth. So again, that early foul trouble for the Spartans. I mean, you still got two minutes left here, but they've only got one with four. They've done a good job managing that. Nice cut. And the lefty finish, Broadnax again. Spartans do a great job in their cutting action, playing off of some of those screens. That's about the sixth or seventh time we've seen one of those guards come off of a, curl, of a, a curl, be able to read it, get to the rim and finish. Tigers will take on Bellerman coming up on Friday. Team that's already knocked off Louisville in the ACC. Interesting matchup. How about that feed from Hunter? PJ missed the bunny. Really good Bellerman team coming in here on Friday night. They do an outstanding job of shooting the basketball. Tigers will enjoy watching this film tonight. Coach Brownell will hopefully enjoy a couple of hours of his birthday, uh, and then they'll get right back to work. Dick Bender, Sean Dixon, 
uh, Billy Donlin, the outstanding staff that they have over there, uh, they will go right back to work, get ready for a schedule that's only going to continue to get harder after Bellarmine, Loyola, Maryland, and then it really gets hard. Now Iowa uh, and, and moving forward from there, December is an incredibly hard month for the Tigers. You didn't see there they have Loyola Chicago. I'm going to go ahead and say they're the only team before January 1 that is playing both Loyolas, Loyola Maryland, Loyola Chicago, and of course there's Loyola Marymount as well, but I mean, you get two Loyolas on the schedule. That's one heck of a way to fill up your bingo card. So I love what the Tigers have done by trying to schedule games on neutral site floors. They're going to do it in Greenville, but they're also going to do it in Atlanta. And Atlanta, the Georgia area, has been such an important piece recruiting-wise for the Tigers anytime they can go back to State Farm Arena in Atlanta and play. Coach Brownell's done it. Less than a minute left. Tigers up a dozen. P.J. Hall. Blocking foul whistled. Backside defender, that's Shada, who rotated over. One more look at this, P.J. turning face. Yeah, when you see that drive and finish right there, um, you know, the trainers, are they're going to tell you that P.J.'s not all the way back, but he's pretty close. You know, it's late in the game. He's played 20-plus minutes, drives that to his right. That's an off-balance finish off of two feet, takes the contact. I know he'd like to step up here now and finish this with these two free throws. This is a free throw there. He's now 0 for 2 from the line. That's uncharacteristic. P.J. coming in 78% for his career from the foul line. And so much of that is just getting back into a rhythm, you know, and that's what these games right now are about. Played well at South Carolina, came in and gave the Tigers an immediate impact. Five points uh, early in the game at South Carolina. His night is done tonight. He's one day closer to being fully healthy and ready to go. Could be the last possession offensively for the Spartans. Broadmax looking to get an angle on Hunter. Chase puts his chest into him twice. Shada, nice backdoor cut for Ganey, who's tied his career high now with 24. Last possession of the game, but the Spartans continue to move without the basketball. Really, really impressive. There are going to be so many things that both of these teams will take from this film tonight that they'll be able to move forward from and build on. We were talking about the Spartans pick to finish middle to the bottom of the Big South. Uh, that's just, uh, I'll just say it, that's laughable. There's no way that there are more than a couple of teams in the Big South got a chance to be better than this squad. Well, when I spoke to Coach Brownell yesterday morning, I had not watched Upstate yet. But Coach Brownell was quick to tell me how good they were on film. And when I watched those two games that they've played against Duke and Brevard, they're good. There's not seven teams better than them in the Big South right now. They're going to have a really good season. Tigers win at 81-70 here tonight. You see the mutual respect Brad Brownell and Dave Dickerson have for one another. It's a good battle tonight, J.D. Uh, on, the, uh, on, on the one hand, you had USC Upstate coming in here playing well, but the Tigers finish on top. So many good things that the Tigers will take away from this. Coming off of that dif disappointing loss on Friday night against South Carolina, they responded, played well, and they'll get ready for a good Bellarmine team on Friday. For J.D. Powell, our staff here in Clemson, I'm William Quackenbush. Thanks for joining us tonight inside Little John Coliseum. Again, the Tigers get back in the win column with an 81-70 victory over the USC Upstate Spartans. We'll see you Friday as the Tigers take on Bellman right here on ACC Network Extra.